Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be sharpening this uh, single flute step drill. Some people call them a uh, unibit. That might be more of a brand name. Uh, I think a step drill is sort of the universal name for these things. So basically it's got one single flute and the deeper you go, the bigger hole you get. And this one was designed to go from a quarter uh, all the way up to three quarter by sixteenths. So quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths, seven sixteenths, and so on all the way up to three quarter. We're not going to sharpen the face of this. Uh, we're going to leave it alone. We're going to sharpen the outside of it. And so we're going to use our uh, two-way camera leaving fixture here. And we're going to um, create a cammed relief on these surfaces and on these surfaces. So this will be a radial relief and this will get an axial relief put onto it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put a single flute cam in here. and. Uh, of course, because this is a single flute tool. So that was a four flute cam I had on there. I'm going to put my single flute cam on. This is my single flute cam, uh, and I'm going to set it up for a right hand cutting tool, which is what we have here. This shank does have three flats on it, uh, but it also has a round, and the round is a nominal 3 8 diameter. So I'm going to use my, uh, my 3 8 inch 5ST collet to hold it. Here I am at my zero, which means the, the tool has stopped coming away from the wheel and is going to begin coming towards the wheel. So I have my two face just below center. I'm at my zero. I've got a zero on my dial, which is showing us the amount of relief that's getting put on. So now as I go forwards, you can see the dial is going minus, which means the tool is coming towards the wheel, which is creating a relief. And it's going to come minus, 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 just keeping that relief going. And then it's going to sort of top out. And through a portion of this rotation, you can see now the dial isn't moving. This is just staying uh, where it was. And then eventually, it's going to start coming back and resetting as we near our line. And uh, so now, before it gets to zero, which is where it started cutting, this uh, trailing edge of the tool has risen above the center line. And so I do know that when this thing is all done, I'll be able to lock out these cams so that this is just spinning around and we'll do this, we'll prove this. We'll put a dial here and what we're going to see showing the relief is it's going to go minus, 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 and then it's just going to stay there. And then it's going to start coming back, but the highest the dial gets at the back edge is still going to be lower than it was at the leading edge. And that's how we're going to know that there is in fact relief on there. Because we're dealing with angles here, I am going to be very careful to get my spindle to the exact same center height as the spindle of the workhead. I have my axial travel locked out. So right now it's only traveling radially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the throw of my fixture to the relief that's currently on the tool. Coming into it, hitting zero, it's coming around. I'm going to give it a little more relief than it had, only by a thou. And at the end, it just drops off. So that's fine. There is our... Uh, radial relief set. If you watch this dial, you'll see that um, we're putting a total of 12 thou radial relief on this thing. So now I'm going to set the dial up and uh, dial in and match the axial relief that's on this thing. 
So this is interesting. I currently have my axial relief still locked out. And as I rotate this, you can see the dial is going minus, which is showing us that there is in fact an axial relief on there. So now I'm going to unlock my axial relief and adjust it until it basically reads zero all the way across this area. And that's how I'll know I've matched the exact amount of axial relief. You can see here, when I first come onto it, I'm at my zero. Now the intention was to make this read zero all the way around. And uh, you can see it's not exactly doing that. It's jumping around a little, but that's the closest we're gonna be able to get. And all that's telling me is that the, the grind on the cam that made this tool is slightly different than the grind on the cam that I have that we're gonna sharpen this with. So what that's gonna mean is I'm not going to, when I, when I first touch any given feature on this thing, it's not going to perfectly instantly clean up all the way around. It's going to be cleaning up some places earlier than other places. Uh, but that's no big deal. The bottom line is as long as there's uh, reliefs on there, clearances, it will cut. Next step here, I'm going to uh, rotate this whole fixture. I'm going to get this angle here running zero and then I can read off the graduations on this fixture, see what actual angle this is, and then I'll know to dress that angle onto my wheel because I'm gonna take my wheel, my wheel's gonna have a, a flat area to it, and then it's gonna have an angled area to it. So we're gonna be grinding all of each of these, all of each of these in one shot. So here I am, I'm running zero on my dial here and I'm exactly at 45 degrees. This stylus is a little on the big side to dial this surface, but uh, first off, it's not crazy critical. And uh, the fact that it's looking good at 45 degrees kind of makes a lot of sense. So we're gonna go with that. I did all of my setup with this uh, rotated to the zero position. Now, when I actually um, grind this thing, I'm gonna back that off a half a degree. And the reason is, I don't want my grinding wheel that's, that's grinding, the, the flat on my grinding wheel, I don't want this whole surface at the, at the same height. I want the, the leading edge to be slightly higher in diameter than the trailing edge. If I was at zero here, this would all be at the same height and so all of this behind here would be dragging as I was going through the cut. But if I make the back a little smaller, the front will do the cutting and the back will have just the slightest bit of relief so that this whole back portion isn't dragging the whole time. It'll just make it cut a lot more freely. And I think a half a degree is just about right for that. Putting a different size pulley on today, uh, this is actually gonna bring the RPM of my grinding wheel up to the proper RPM. I have been running it a little slowly, and the reason is I finally got a new belt, and uh, it took me forever to find this belt. It is not a common belt. The other belt I had, well, first off, it's 30 years old, and you know, it, it's, it's been stalled on a couple times. It's, it, it's got some wear to it. I wanted a backup, but also it was a little on the small side, and I wasn't able to get a one-to-one -one ratio to get my grinding wheel up to the speed I wanted it at. Because we're gonna be grinding with a pretty small diameter wheel today, I didn't want to be running it slowly because I wouldn't get as nice a finish. So finally, I have my new belt. It is big enough to allow me to use uh, equal size pulleys on here. And so I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm gonna mount this wheel and I'm going to uh, dress it again, 45 degrees and zero degrees, get it running true. And then you can see basically when we're grinding, it's gonna be in there doing both of those surfaces like I pointed out earlier. I like to always get it close just by eye, by spinning it around, uh, just so I'm wasting less wheel when I dress it to get it running true. 
I'm going to set this stop here so that my fixture can't get any closer to my, my, my spindle so I don't crash these two together. And that's just a little safety precaution there. I'm going to rotate the grinding head now to the 45 degrees that I want to shape onto the wheel. Just setting my diamond dresser up now and of course I'm going to be very careful to get it exactly at center height because we're dealing with angles and center height matters more than you could imagine. I've got my wheel at 45 degrees, I have my diamond dresser at center height and I got my dust collector set up so we're going to go ahead and take a lick off this 45 degree angle on this grinding wheel. I am going to give it a really fine dressing because I'm hoping this form will stand up throughout the whole process because I really would prefer not to have to redo uh, all these angles on the wheel partway through. So I'm going to see if that'll work for me. I'm coming back to zero here. We'll dress the wheel to zero. Close to being set up here, I think the final thing before I touch off here, what I'm going to do, uh, this machine's table travel has a high and low range. And this is the high range, it's, uh, you know, it, it moves pretty abruptly. But uh, when I pull this out to low range, you can see I get much, much smaller movements out of this table now. And so I'm going to touch off somewhere over in here uh, using my crossfeed handle. And then I'm going to work my way in this direction until I engage with this angled surface here. Bringing this in nice and slow using my crossfeed hand wheel. Can't really see that well down in there, so I'm just waiting to hear and see it touch. Starting to touch there now. Now I'm going to come with my table hand wheel, get into that 45 degree angle. I can see this particular step on this tool has done an awful lot of work. It's uh, pretty beat up at the leading edge. I'm going to minimum skim all this damage out of here. It won't be a nominal size, uh, but at least it'll be a functioning tool once again. Now we're going to see, we're going to dial this and we're going to make sure we have relief on it. I have both my axial and radial travel locked out. So this spindle is spinning just round, perfectly round. And here we are. I've got my stylus right on my leading edge, dial set to zero. We should see that dial go minus, which is this direction, as soon as I start rotating it. And yep, there it goes, minus. That's our relief. Now it's topped out. We expected that. We saw that on the cam. Now what we do want to see is that we get... We fall off of our trailing edge before that gets anywhere near zero, and boom, it's happened. Uh, so that's perfect. That's just what we wanted to see. Here it is all finished up. 
Uh, we've got uh, we've removed all that damage. We have a nice crisp cutting edge now. Uh, again, this is not going to cut nominal size holes, which is fine. We knew that going into it, uh, but it'll still be a useful tool. So that's it for this video, guys. I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, and we've got some regular viewers that uh, give us some really thoughtful and supportive and well thought out comments. And I, I really enjoy reading them. We both do. And uh, thank you all very much. You're, you're why we do this. And uh, having said that, inevitably, someone's going to point out to uh, me that they can buy this tool for $5 at Harbor Freight and they think it's silly that I'm sharpening it. So to that I say, you my friend are missing the point of my videos. See you guys next time.